Okay, it's the Brian's Free Time and Stuff podcast number two. I'm Brian, and this is Mark P. on the other side over here, this guy, right over there. And uh, today me. we're going to talk about, uh, like, like how we wanted to be musicians as kids. It's like, of course, everybody wants to be a musician or an actor or something yeah. awesome when they're kids, right? But yeah, we had that high school dream of starting a band and doing all that cool stuff and being like our heroes. Of course, not knowing the whole time anything real about what the music business is about and how terrible yeah. it is to these people. <laughs> growing up in the 80s, born in the 70s, growing up in the 80s, so totally the rock and roll, the hair metal times and you know all that when you could still go and buy an album, a full album at the store and go through the whole experience of, you know, reading along with the lyrics and reading all the liner notes and all that good stuff. And they had albums, cassettes, CDs yeah. were just starting to get popular. Yeah. Yeah. When classic rock was current and modern, <laughs> <laughs> that, was the, that was the rock of the time. So, yeah, I was just thinking about this the other day, like, like just our, the like our experiences with with music because it's like it, it's changed so much now it seems with like kids gets you know you have spotify and you had youtube and you have like streaming outlets and stuff like that but you're not yeah. going to a music store like we did like we had tower records and you could go and buy the album you know just like you said yeah. we read all the notes and stuff and read all the band thank yous and cool stuff yep. and pictures and all that just you know that's all we knew of the bands pretty much was you know that's it that was it you know what you saw on unless, you got to, yeah. Yeah, unless you got to see them out live which yeah. didn't happen until much later yeah for the most part once we could drive and our parents would let us out <laughs> to yeah you know many miles away and to see a band play yeah like yeah. in the Chicago area, northern Chicago area, we had uh, Alpine Valley, Wisconsin. That oh, was yeah. Our, East Troy. Our go-to go -to place there when we were kids. Yeah, we were too too old or too young to, to go to Poplar Creek when that was kind of a big deal. Remember that yeah. place? Yeah, yeah. Was that in States? Rockford? That wasn't in Rockford. No, I was like Hoffman. It was like like on the way yeah. to Elgin or Hoffman Estates. It really wasn't that far. Estates, that's right. Yeah, that area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember in like my Illinois, birthday, in the Illinois area was what we're talking about. So, I I like my parents would take like because my brother and my sisters were older. It's like uh, concerts became a family outing, and I was like just a, a toddler practically when they would take me at first. So yeah. I remember, like, I, I want to say it was, like, uh, I remember being, like, front row for Kansas during the actual, like, Carry On My Wayward Son tour when that yeah. was like, their brand new hit single. <laughs> I, wow. I, I'm not sure what year that was, but I'll never forget being, like, like a little kid looking up at the stage going, holy crap, what is going on here, you know? And then Guys with very like, long beards and afros and... Yeah, it actually have a Hammond organ on stage, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it was so loud <laughs> and everything. Yeah, definitely like uh, all that, all those experiences. Yeah, definitely made me a music lover and all that. And then after that, it was like I I clearly remember seeing uh, Rush performing like twenty one twelve live, <laughs> and we were in the the seats just before the 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 big you know ski hill thing or whatever that yeah. is pavilion of alpine valley so we were in the, the 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 high seats up in the back and i remember the laser lights and everything and and hearing the, you know, <laughs> that whole you know overture wow intro. and it just I, I i i i'm imagining it in my head just as it happened it it's it's stuck with me that like much it's yeah it was such a crazy memory but those were like one, some of my first music memories of like to just are burned into my brain yeah. yeah. Wow. So what what, what ended cool. up being your first concerts? Uh not until high school really. Aside from seeing Sky Band, your yeah. our older siblings, you know, got together back in the day yeah. and 
our brothers were yeah. in a band. Yeah. What, you know, I remember a Halloween party at a place down the street where, <laughs> yeah. at Dottie's where she had like a barn or something in the back of her yeah. house. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I was probably seven years old, six, you know, five, six, seven. I don't know. The first. Uh, yeah. The first actual ma major concert was probably when I was 16 and I went to uh alpine valley to see rush okay. and mr big was opening for that um yeah and that was in probably 1990 so yeah that was for a first concert you know that was very eye-opening like holy cow look at these performers i mean arguably you know two of the best bass players in rock you know history would you know got to see them in their primes you know basically and yeah you know, okay. Paul Gilbert, incredible on, on the guitar. I mean, what 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 else can you say? And this was back when they were really like mainstream and young and vibrant and running all over the place. And, you know, just yeah, they were just kids like, geez, I think Paul Gilbert was wasn't much older than we were, <laughs> like three, three years older or something like that. There's, yeah, 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 yeah. Like 57 or something like that. Now I'm going to be 52 at the end of the year. And, <laughs> yeah, he's only like five years older. So it's like. It, it's amazing how some of these people progress in their their skills and their instruments yeah. fast. It's right, like so dedicated. They're so, uh, yeah, just disciplined to 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 learn it so quickly. It's incredible. Yeah, well, they definitely t take it on as a craft, and they, you know, it's they eat and breathe and live that that playing that machine, you know, that instrument. Yeah, yeah they're just, they're driven to succeed at that. And they're always, you know, part of a project or doing their own recordings or whatever. So, yeah, it wasn't much longer after that, I guess. Probably we became like best friends or so, or we started hanging out because it was like nice. Yeah, I was right in that time frame. Yeah. So then, yeah. And then after that, like it was either that some, later that that summer or it was the next year we ended up seeing a bunch of bands together. Like we went and saw uh, Aerosmith. We saw them for the pump tour remember that yeah that was, that was a great album that was a rowdy everybody was really out of their minds and that uh Huge. not us so much because we weren't really 21 yet but um yeah, yeah. Uh, i could remember seeing some stuff in the crowd there <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was an education for certain yeah like yeah. whoa this is what people do at concerts when they're out of their mind okay Aerosmith. Uh, I think we saw Kiss in there. I think when yeah, yeah. And Winger non makeup non makeup Kiss um, non makeup uh, Kiss and they had Wing, uh, Winger. I Winger. think Slaughter or one of those bands were were opening for those guys too. Skid yeah. Row. I don't know a couple of those. I just remember like going back to the the Aerosmith show. I remember like having like you know, we have older siblings, so they had the old Aerosmith albums from when they first started, you know, Toys in the Attic and all that. Yeah. We heard yep. that stuff, you know, around the house all the time. So to like actually hear, you know, uh, like a in their prime, you know, a little bit older, more seasoned, I, th I believe sober Aerosmith at that time. I think for a little period, some of them were, <laughs> yeah. But it was like you know, here on the wagon, off the wagon kind of thing. But they were trying, you know. Yeah, yeah. They to to hear those old classic songs, you know, played by these guys, you know, while they still had their, you know, some youth in them, and it was was incredible. You know, that was like a, something that I remember thinking, "Oh my God, I'm watching these masters <laughs> of of rock and roll right now." You know, and I remember like wanting to take like a mental snapshot of the moment when they were playing. Right to roll in and all that you know it's like and walk this way it was like oh my god i'm really here i'm really here <laughs> hearing aerosmith play this you know that was incredible yeah incredible stuff. You know, all the new hits that they had you know like angel and and that's the the stuff with the alicia silverstone videos was that it that that was that was pump right love in the elevator or is that the later one might have been and he's got a gun or that i don't yeah, know and he's got a gun and all that yeah those those songs i believe that's that was that album so that was a pretty big hit yeah yeah they were mainstream you know like yeah. that was popular back then that you know as opposed was, to what's popular yeah, today you know yeah so yeah, we saw a lot of shows we saw uh not long after that was like the next summer was when we saw Van Halen the first time. 
and that was you know the van hagar that was the four unlawful carnal knowledge yeah when they were touring for like two years i think we saw them blew my mind multiple times we saw them yeah um that was that was incredible it felt that felt like for me being such a huge fan since i was a kid like probably like the first time i really noticed them probably was back you know 79 78 remember my brother listening to the albums all the time and so yeah seeing them was like uh that was something that was definitely had to be done <laughs> oh yeah it was great great van halen, the mighty van halen yeah you know i mean everybody can debate you know everybody has their favorite singer but you know that sammy is you know a, a rock god basically and yeah i mean going back to mantras you know. Jeez, rock candy, all that stuff. Then mm -hmm. it's and drive fifty five, Trans Am, Highway Wonderland. Come on, let's yeah, go. Yeah, <laughs> the Red Rocker. Yeah, and then you know he, he comes to Van Halen, and you know all the contractual yeah, stuff yeah. they had to get out of to do that, and then bam, they're like number one, number one, number one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, know, and Billboard and all that. So they were like on top of the world for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, like in, in, in my top five list, Van Halen is definitely probably my number one all time favorite band of like all yeah. time. So Agreed. That that one, yeah, most memories, you know, growing up and having that on in the background <laughs> to oh yeah, the craziness that we ever did, you know. Constant. So Van Halen would be my number one, definitely. It pretty much had that one cassette tape that I had, which had which I bought, you know, it was a, you know, professionally done. It had women and children first on one side and side B had fair warning. Yeah. yeah. So it was like two sides, two albums. And that was like basically in my car. That's back in the day when an album <laughs> could be like 30 minutes. <laughs> well, who would, who would you say is your number two band next to For like me personally, it's gotta be rush. Yeah. Um, but there's circumstances, you know, my brothers, you know, when we were very, you know, influential when I was very little and yeah, especially my youngest older brother would, was listening. He introduced me and, you know, would let me listen to Xanadu, you know, and all kinds of the the trippy, like long progressive stuff they had in the late mid to late 70s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen to it on headphones. I just thought that was cool that my brother would let me actually hang out with him in his yeah, it's cool those room kind of... with the stereo and all that. But yeah, it's like the, our favorite bands usually have something to do with like like the first times we bonded with other people too. You know, it's like the exactly. memory experiences around the music and all that. Yeah. I mean, that's when I, when I first picked up a bass for the first time, which was probably age 15, uh -huh. my, my brother had a bass in his closet that he never used. It was a PV, you know, like basically bottom of the level bass, you know, but it was cool. He's like, here, you know, he gave it to me, <clears throat> started listening to rush and tried to, figure my way around, you know, and that's basically yeah. how that started for me. So that's why Rush is a big deal for me. Um, even the 80s stuff that a lot of people didn't, you know, didn't find appealing because it was more mainstream keyboardy, but yeah. pretty yeah. good stuff in there. 90s, they kind of went back to their power trio type of stuff. Yeah, they kind um, of experimented with a lot of different things. Yeah, you know. The, the whole keyboards thing mm -hmm. they opened them up. I mean, just being three people, it sounded like an orchestra. You know, yeah, it sounded like a million people, you know. <clears throat> so that I mean, yeah, it was just a big, big part of my upbringing and and, and journey, I guess, and through music is was that yeah. for a lot of different reasons, you know. Then you know, obviously, they're iconic. You know, they was lucky enough to see them when they came through Chicago here, like on their last three tours, including the last one, which was um, you know their fair their farewell one and. I mean, they were just, you know, hard hitting. And, and I mean, it was just amazing the, the amount of, you know, noise that those guys make, <laughs> you know, and they're just so polished after basically being on the road for 40, yeah, yeah. 50 years or whatever it's been, you know. So, yeah, yeah for me, yeah. that that that's uh, that's that gets my vote. <laughs> yeah, like Rush is definitely up there for me, but it, it was kind of like, I don't know, it, it was uh it was definitely a, a a drummers kind of band. It seemed like a drummers and yeah. bass and and I no remember doubt about uh, it. 
I remember like we had, uh, I think in school at that time, it was like, I can't remember what grade it was, second grade maybe, I don't, I don't even know. But it was like, there was like, bring some music to class day to show the teacher or show the, the class, you know, what kind of music, you, you know, that we're all into and stuff like that. And you could bring anything you wanted. I mean, kids were bringing like the scorpions, you know, yeah and it was like, sure and I remember uh, my, my brother said, yeah, bring Rush in, you know? And I was like, oh, I don't know, because, uh, uh getty lee's voice is so high that i thought maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe they would think it was, funny or it was too funny sounding or something like that yeah yeah rush is definitely up there for me it's like because it was like one of the first concerts i saw and i remember also being mesmerized by the all the world's a stage double album yeah where, well you open it up and there's neil pert's drum kit like the whole thing yeah that was so cool god i used to just stare at that for hours it was just, i know 100 percent. yeah but yeah i was always more like guitar focused and 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 for me like uh my number two band definitely is acdc like ah uh, yeah so the whole yeah. time like you were probably jamming out like for me 1988 89 like probably before we started hanging out i i had like all the acdc albums like glued yeah. into the tape deck pretty much it was just yeah just non-stop like i i of course started with uh back in black you know hearing that all the time and at first I was more of a, a Brian Johnson fan than I was a, a Bon Scott fan. So I got all the Brian Johnson albums first. Yeah. And then, yeah, just listen to all those. I had all those CDs and Angus Young, freaking amazing bluesy soloist with, you know, his, his vibrato on guitar. It, it was just absolutely amazing. I, yeah, but never got to see them live. You I know? mean, you know, it, it, in the eighties in and, you know, it was basically, you know, heavy rock, like Van Halen, you have all the hair bands yeah. and then you had metal, like heavy metal making, you know, you know, a, a, a step to the forefront. A lot of people would pick, you know, Metallica, Metallica or yeah. Megadeth or, you know, Slayer, you know, whatever. For me, the, the most hard hitting metal band is Pantera. Oh, yeah. you know, the yeah. late great, you know, Abbott brothers, mm -hmm. um, they're still part of that band is still touring to this day with very capable replacements. Um, they sound really good. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but that another, it was just another soundtrack for me for a, a part of my life, which was kind of cool and also kind of difficult, yeah, um, yeah. for, for various reasons. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of, uh, I, I spent a lot of hours, you know, listening to those guys and, you know, get and getting that groove because they they were you know heavy and and all that and and metal and they had that know, bluesy swing to them too. They still had a, a groove and and, a, and some style like that. You know that had it and yeah, they obviously the, the angry lyrics and you know that you can go down a road there dissecting their lyrics and inspired what, what, by Van Halen too. You know, big time, yeah. And another yeah, you know drummer and 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 guitar player that that were brothers, just like Eddie and Alex. So. Yeah, absolutely. You know, got to see them live once. Uh, that was at Tinley Park. Mm. Uh, I you know, can't. It was just a kind of a blur that whole day. But yeah, there was. That was a very rowdy concert. Very yeah. very. <laughs> like like, I I almost saw them. We went to the concert. We got there, but then we proceeded to get so drunk that we missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a that's a Pantera experience right there. See right there. <laughs> that's that's what we're talking about. Yeah, and it pretty much around the same time that we started hanging out as well in high school. Mm -hmm. and all. Uh, like, I think the first album I heard of these guys was uh, Rage for Order, actually. Ah, yes, Queensryche. Well, Queensryche. Yeah, Queensryche was huge. Uh, those guys were amazing. And that, to yep. me, was my introduction to, like, some more progressive rock, you know. yeah. Even though they were pretty straightforward, you know, it was very intricate, very, very uh, skilled music, the way they, you know, yeah. put their guitar parts together and, and, and Scott Rockenfield on drums, you know, it's like, holy crap, the guy was yeah. amazing. like cannons yeah. drums. So, yeah, Queensryche is definitely uh, yep. uh, an, another one of those bands that was the soundtrack of my life, you know, in, in, in times like 
but Rage 100 percent something about that album yeah that really hit me and then yeah of course empire came out and it just took it took over you know the airwaves you had so many hits come off of empire yeah they were on mtv when they were playing videos they were always on there we we went and saw them live yeah i believe at yeah. the all state arena or whatever they called it back yeah, then back then yeah and, uh, and they, you know they played they played the you know their their first sets with with the new stuff and then they then they did you know operation mind crime all, and, all and in a row entirety. yeah that was incredible so we got the i mean what a show. show i mean we saw that uh, it was it, i think we were in like the second level you know with decent seats and uh yeah, yeah it was just an amazing and suicidal tendencies opened up for them so it was an amazing <laughs> yeah. show it was just absolutely legendary yeah another great bass player the, the great robert trujillo who's now the bass player for metallica yeah, yeah. Um, he was more funk man back then so he probably still incredible. is you know an incredible band like uh the, the 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 stuff that they played was just it was incredible yeah i just had such an experience and i remember being so blown away by that concert that it was like i couldn't touch my queensrike albums for a while afterwards <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> you're like but kind of in shock like, yeah, it was the shock of seeing it or something like that. It was it almost like scared me. I'm like, oh my God, this band is too powerful <laughs> or something. I yeah. don't know. But yeah, I didn't listen to Queen's Racket for a while after that. And then it was like what? That was 1990, 91. The foreign mm -hmm. knowledge probably took over. And then I went back to listening to Van Halen all the time. But then uh also at that time, uh on my list here to to go with, you know. Van Halen, ACDC, Queensryche, and Pantera is Lynch Mob. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> that for me was like, oh my God, George Lynch. Yeah, you know, I mean, I appreciate that some of the Doc and stuff, but it was more the more the, the Lynch Mob type stuff is some of his solo stuff he did. Yeah, um, George Lynch solo album was incredible. Like, yeah. The guy, just he's got such a unique style. That, yeah, uh, yeah. very good. I remember getting the the Wicked Sensation album and and uh, at first listen I was like oh my god this is too heavy for me I thought. <laughs> I thought like oh this is like heavy metal you know but of course you know in comparison to like Pantera it's still like pop rock right so exactly it did have a harder edge you know it was like a it was like listening to Van Halen like music more more along the lines of like what David Lee Roth era Van Halen was you know. That yeah. harder edge, whiskey soaked, hard rock, bordering heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was another band that I really wish I would have been able to see live back then. I think it would have been something. right. Never saw George Lynch play live, but I did see him at a guitar clinic at uh, Sam Ash, and I got to talk to him for a little while, and he's a real cool dude. Yeah, so that was that was fun to see, but yeah, never got to see them play live. I forgot. I forgot about that. You just brought that up. I forgot about that. That you, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Like chain smoking cigarettes outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and right. I believe it was cold out at that time too. Like if I remember right, and he was just out there shivering and smoking. And somebody <laughs> was asking him questions about Eddie Van Halen, and he and he like I first I thought, what are you doing? This is George Lynch. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask Eddie Van Halen questions. <laughs> ask questions about his experience, you know. But he was really right. cool. He was like, oh, Ed, yeah. He's like, I, he's like, I wouldn't go as far as you know to say that we were like friends or anything like that. But you know, we ran into each other quite a bit and would talk quite a bit. And and he bought an old like uh cabinet like 412 marshall cabinet off of eddie like one of those ones from the first couple tours where it, it didn't have any tolex on it so it's like the just the the wood you know He's, yeah he still has that cabinet because i think it's part of his like his uh ir packs for his uh amp sims and stuff like that so they yeah. digitized that cabinet and it's yeah he's just a, he's just an all-around really cool down-to-earth dude and uh, yeah, such a unique guitar style. He's really like, to me, he's like, he's more of like the Jimi Hendrix to me of my, of our generation, you know, because he had such a unique sound and 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 he yeah. really, really make that guitar scream. Whereas Eddie was like a virtuoso, you know, kind of like a hard rock Ingve Malmsteen in a way, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. But George, yeah, it seemed like he's, his thing was all his own. Like you, there's no copy in that, you know? <laughs> It's just amazing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's my list.
pretty much. <laughs> I don't know. Who do you got? Any 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 others to add? We got like a couple Honorable mentions. I mean, you know, I would for me because I was, you know, picking up the bass and I was you know, foraying into playing keyboards, I definitely got a shout out to, to Dream Theater. Oh, yeah. I know it's very yeah. math, you know, very guy also, rock, you know, very yeah. computerized, not, not that, not, not computer. You know what I mean? It's just very yeah. structured, very written. structured. And, and, you know, you know, these, but you know, you got to shout yeah. out to those guys for you know, having that capability. Yeah. I mean, that's, you can't just do that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I listen to a lot of their stuff, but not as, not as much lately. Um, now that they're getting the band back together, you know, with the you know, Mike Portnoy returning, yeah. it'd be interesting to see what their next set of music sounds like, or mm-hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, that that's just for me because I I just been influenced by by the di- different uh, players that they've had in their bands and was always just blown away by by their capability. Mm. <clears throat> but you know that that that's about as far as I took it. I mean, you know, if you can, you can type in Dream Theater tribute, and there's a billion of you know guys that are worshiping, you know, them. <laughs> worshiping them, and and they're you know recreating their music down to the notes, and it's like, hey, that's really cool, you know. But I, I never really wanted to do that. Before. I just wanted to appreciate, you know, like wow, that that's a really like, like a classical style, classically trained, but mm-hmm. on rock instruments and. You know, and then the you know the keyboard stuff that Jordan Rudis does, you know, and the way he builds sounds, and he was basically at the forefront of, you know, all the plugin stuff that you do now in your studio. I mean, he was basically, you know, creating those apps, you know, twenty years ago. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things about that band to like, and but it's still, if you listen to it too much, you get a headache, kind of a thing. So, like, like I remember with uh, Dream Theater. The uh, systematic chaos. Uh, yeah. That concert we went to see. When was that? That had to be like, what, two thousand eight or something like that. I don't even remember. Somewhere around that, yeah. ten or twelve. I don't know, but yeah, we saw them in Rosemont, I think. Yeah, that was at the. Uh, venue, by the way. Let me see, systematic chaos, Dream Theater, when that came out. Systematic Chaos Studio Album, two thousand seven. You kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. Release date June fourth, two thousand seven. Oh my God, we're old. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like it wasn't that long ago, but yeah, that it was, was. Yeah, that was Portnoy's last album before they got what? Mike Mangini was it? Mike Mangini, which yeah. after a lengthy audition and all that, yes. Yeah, so. Wow. Oh, 2007. I can't believe it was that long ago. Yeah. Gee, we're coming up on, what? that's what, 17 years? Jesus. Something we're like that. There. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I think that was around the time we went, we went, we we all drove all the way to the city and and saw Steve Vai yeah, with, when he had Billy Sheehan playing with him. Um, yeah. And uh, Tony McAlpine on keyboard. That was, was like a real super group there. Yeah, yeah. We we're at the House of Blues in, in downtown Chicago. That was a pretty incredible show. Yeah. Uh, had a lot of fun. Maybe had a little too much fun, if you will. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we got a little hammered. Yeah. A little bit, you know, but still, it was like, I, I just couldn't believe that. Like, oh my God, that's Steve Vai. I was like, I, that's yeah. Steve Vai. There he is. You know, all the With Billy watched Sheehan. a million of his DVDs, and then there he is yeah. in real life. And Billy Sheehan, yeah. too. I was just like, wow. <laughs> Yeah. So like yeah, for me the honorable mentions are definitely all those guitar instrumental heroes of mine, like Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Blues Saracino. Saracino, yeah. I listened to those albums over and over again. Like probably wasn't as as nuts about them as my top five, but yeah, they were definitely honorable for sure. Yeah. That was a, a a quite a time to be a guitar player, yeah. Right. And nowadays it's like, you know, I don't know. (laughs) It's, it's, it's crazy with guitar on the internet now. I mean, there's so many bedroom guitar players who are, you know, you know, arguably better than the greats. (laughs) You know what I mean? Sure. But they're not 
writing their own music. They probably couldn't write a song to save their lives. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. and they'll never be with singers that, you know, compliment them is, you know, and, and shoot them to the stratosphere. There's never going to be a Joe Perry, you know, Steven Tyler combo, right. David Lee Roth, Eddie Van Halen right. combo. Right or uh, Angus and Bon Scott, or Brian Johnson type combo again. It's like those are lightning in a bottle type mm -hmm. bands, I think. You know, it's like that. Yeah. Isn't so that Sam weird? Walsh, new musicians. That, that era That era ended, I mean, for real, and now it's a different era. Yeah, it was know? superstars back then. It was totally different, yeah. So now it's like... I guess you go see a dance routine, you know, and they're <laughs> yeah, and they're singing a, a whatever hit song was in the latest, you know, Disney movie. I don't know <laughs> exactly. It's like I just I think like recently there's been like uh, what is it like Dua Lipa uh, is uh -huh. like like in the top five, top ten or something like that. She had that hit with the Barbie movie and all that, and it's like you. You look at her videos and yeah, it's a, it's again, it's like the big stage numbers, big dance routines and all that. And Choreographed like, big time. Yeah. yeah. And it's that's, awesome. that's takes a lot of talent to pull off too. I mean. No, absolutely. You know. It's a great entertaining show and all, but it's like, where do, where did all the, 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 the hard rock and bands go? It's like, they're just not charting anymore, you know, and the, and the ones that do are the, you know, the ones that have been around for a few decades, like the Foo Fighters and all that. Foo Fighters, yeah, and the the old guys that are still out there doing it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you got Wolfgang Van Halen, but he's got a name, you know. He's got a recognized yeah. name. It's like he didn't really have to to work his way to the top. He's was already there, <laughs> you know. It's a, right. So yeah, he, he's he's got the money to do the production and the and hire the best musicians to play with him and stuff like that. Put out the greatest sounding albums, and he's living you know basically at, at, at a, the 5150 studio you know so it's like he's got quite the advantage over the average person and you know 100 percent. yeah he didn't have to like yeah. sweat he his way it. through the bars and and perform and you know do covers and all that like his dad did you know yeah, back exactly yeah. 50 years ago a cover bands you know working through the bars but but yeah i mean he's great and everything but yeah never had to you know carry the rock on <laughs> i guess he is he is definitely doing his own thing it's not like he's carrying the van halen torch you know it's like he's in a way he is but it's like he's doing his own thing his own you know thing, so, yeah, absolutely so that's cool that's what i like about his stuff and he's still you know it's like yeah he, he's his he, he is his father's son for sure 100 percent. those skills he's that's what he grew up seeing and that's what he does yeah yeah, so it's pretty yeah. incredible. Yeah, and uh, I've watched a bunch of his concerts online, and that's what I—that's honestly what I find myself doing now. Is it's like I just watch concerts online. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I've gotten to that age where it's like I don't want to be in crowds. I want to get to bed at an early, nice time. You know, I don't want to stay yep. up late. You know, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. So it's like I just find myself watching either new concerts or going back and looking at the the, the great so i guess we could probably uh just wrap it up then i suppose yeah that's pretty much the crux of, of what it is you know for me so we're at about an hour's worth of time and, and i don't think we want to keep anybody holding up for that and, and honestly uh -huh. it's like our our uh our chat our first one got like 75 views and it says the average duration that people watch it is only like a minute and a half anyway so it's like all right whatever so yeah there might be a few people that follow follow through to the end but probably i know i, know I watched it to then so <laughs> i thought it was yeah, yeah not bad for the first one <laughs> yeah well i thought it went okay so you know, yeah first one's out of the way second one almost in the yeah. bed so yep so yeah so if anybody made it to the end uh like and subscribe Thank you. To all that fun stuff thanks for watching and uh yeah we'll probably not be doing a show next week because we've got people coming here me and the wife will have a visitor and there will be no Wednesday yep. show. but i'm gonna be doing a little bit of traveling here too so uh maybe towards the end of the month we'll we'll get back at you
yeah do another video talk about some other stuff like i'm really considering considering like the alien uh the the unidentified aerial phenomenon ufas yes because holy crap there's been like lots of activity about that kind of stuff and lots of stuff on the news and and you know we've actually seen seen some stuff in the sky <laughs> so so yes explainable things you know so it's like yeah we should talk about that that'd be fun but I, I definitely think that'd be cool for sure yeah that'd be a, a definite like probably could spend easily a couple hours talking about that <laughs> yeah especially how it's popped back it was back in the news recently and yeah maybe not so much lately but you know there's the fact that you know it's being acknowledged by the government and you know this country and all that and Seems already like have been in other countries so yeah it's it's definitely yeah. something we could look at yeah it seems like there's something happening out there i don't know if it's aliens or if it's drones or what but there's some weird technology floating around up there in the air oh yeah so yeah all right we can end the video now i suppose and then uh yeah see you uh what a couple see weeks probably. <laughs> see you next time peace all right have a good one pizza out <laughs>